Just don't scare it. We just found some beefsteak fungus. This normally grows an oak. Yeah, and it is an edible fungus. Looks a bit like liver on the inside and does actually bleed like a steak. It's remarkable. Best eaten raw. I'm gonna leave it, because what that's gonna do is drop its spores and hopefully spread it around and there'll be more beefsteak fungus if we leave it well alone. Okay, should we carry on? Yeah. And what are they? Oh. What are they? Um, they're the plays. Which buzzards. Buzzards, they are buzzards. Okay then Finn, what sort of tree is this? Birch. It is a birch tree, so it's a silver, so it's got a white bark to it. There's a couple of types in the UK. You've got the silver birch and you've got the downy birch. Now in previous videos, we've shown a technique where we use a knife to cut off a chunk of the bark. Now what's the golden rule with that technique? We don't cut off a live tree. Yeah, so you never go near a live tree with a knife. Now this is a live tree, so obviously we're not able to use that technique. We would only ever use the knife if we found some downed birch or we knew it was definitely dead, even if it was still standing, but it would have to be dead standing. However, on a lot of birch trees, you can see that you get this flaky bark. Now if we just use our fingers and we just very gently peel off a few layers, like that, we get super fine birch bark that will take a spark really, really easily, yeah. but we do not damage the tree. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna harvest some of this and we're gonna use two techniques yeah. when we, we light. We're gonna use the downed dead birch bark where we're gonna scrape it, yeah. but we're also gonna use this, which, which should just take a spark on its own without any knife preparation. Yeah. Okay then, so let's start gathering some of this. Okay. Okay, Finn, so that's enough from the one tree. I don't want to take too much from the one, we'll shift to the other one, okay? This one? Well, no, a bit further along, that's the same tree, isn't it? It's just a different stem. Oh, yeah. So that's it. You've always got to pick it in the direction that it's ready to peel off. If you go the other way, you'll just snap it. So this stuff needs to peel this way, doesn't it? This is the fine birch bot we just collected to use for our fire. Now we're going to cut to us using it. There's two techniques of birch bark fire lighting we're going to practice. So we've got the fluffy birch bark that we collected off the live tree, and we've also got a piece of birch bark that we collected off a, a dead tree. Now we collected this some time ago, and in fact what I'll do now is I'll chop in some footage on our last camp where I went and collected some of this. So we'll cut to that now. So you've seen how we've collected that. Uh, the other way, that was off a relatively fresh fallen birch tree, so I had to, had to use a knife to really cut in and, and slide it underneath and, and lift it. The other techniques, if you find quite a decayed birch tree, uh, you'll, you'll find that you can physically just peel that off. But what you might find when you do that, a lot of the under sort of structure of the wood will stick to the bark. So it is worth taking the knife, 
and actually just running and scraping all that so it's nice and flat for when later, when we're actually doing the scraping technique, it makes it a bit easier. Okay then. Right then, so which one of these two do you want to go first, Finn? Right, we'll go for that one, which is probably going to be the trickier one. So we'll go for that one first. So what is it about birch bark that makes it so good for fire lighting? It's got lots of oils in it. Yeah, so it's got a high concentration of oil. And that means, it's interesting, when we see it light, what colour is the smoke going to be? Black. Yeah, it burns black, a little bit like fatwood, which has got a lot of resin in it. It's got a lot of oils and, and sort of uh, flammable materials. So it, it actually burns really black smoke, whereas conventional wood will often burn sort of white or light brown smoke. The key with any fire lighting is surface area. So if you try and put a spark onto that bark, although it's got the oil in it, have a go. Do you think you're going to be able to light it in that? No. So it clearly hit it, but nothing. Okay, so we need to increase the surface area. This knife, which is a conventional moor, is, is quite heavy for you to, to operate. So the technique that you're going to employ is, is that scraping technique isn't it yeah. using the front near the tip of the knife not digging it in but just scraping that and you can see the dust this is quite a heavy knife so you're going to use that carving knife so you have a go at that and just start to scrape up the other point that we say is that your finger is relatively near that that blade so i've certainly maybe in a rush or something been a little bit careless and ended up stabbing my finger so it's better while you're learning and, and you're developing your skills all the time pop a pop your left glove on and that will just protect it still be really careful with the knife but we're going to get you scraping and building up a little bit of a pile the other good thing to do with with this is you're building a pile up on the birch bark itself so that almost produces almost like an ember pan for you to transfer it around okay right you make a start with that Brilliant, Finn. You've got to be careful because if birch bark flicks, it ends up sending all your shavings all over the place. And certainly, this isn't good to do in stronger winds because all your hard work gets blown away, doesn't it? As we found out before. That's excellent. Okay, I reckon you've virtually got enough there. So now, if you scrape it together in a pile, so you need to build a big pile of it. Now, you possibly, if we really wanted to get a fire going, you might want to make a little bit more of it. We've also cut that big piece of bark in half because that hole in the middle of it was causing us trouble. And there's no need to waste it for the demonstration. The other thing you want before you start going is other little flakes of it, of birch bark. And we can tear that up. So if you have a go at just tearing it up into little pieces, like I take the whole thing, tear it up into little pieces. And then once that spark's going, we can get it lit through there. But we're not going to do an enormous amount of it because we don't want an actual proper fire. This is just for demonstration. There we go, excellent. So we can get these little flakes. We'll pop those in there. The other thing is we'll pop me that knife back. Okay. Pop me the knife back. So if you find it goes out, what you can do is lift. I think and, it's and going expose. off. It's going off. I know. We shouldn't <laughs> we've got it going too well. There we go. Right, do you want to smother that? Because we don't want a proper fire. So just gently put it out. So you can all... see that black smoke, can't you? There you go, keep going, keep going. If you starve it of the air, it will go out, won't it? So you can see there, Finn, just how much this stuff will catch. Um, so you've got to be wary, even in demonstration, we, that almost got a little bit out of hand, didn't it? But that's lost all its heat, hasn't it? Nothing there. Nothing there at all. No. So we'll pop that to one side. And we'll switch techniques. So this is the fluffy stuff. So this is the second way. Now the big difference here is we've not used a knife to prep any of this. This has already got that surface area. So the reason we were scraping before was to get lots of flake and that lets all the heat, lets the oxygen in. That's why it will catch. What's the way, what can we do to that to increase that surface area even more? Uh, maybe rub it together. Perfect, yeah, go for it. Yeah, we can fluff it up. Excellent. That's even more. So you open it out again, perfect. So we've got lots of air in there. So that's now fluffed up. If we wanted to, and if we're actually making a fire, we could pop that onto a piece of birch bark, possibly a little bit bigger than that. 
but the big difference with this technique is we've harvested it and we've now prepped it without using a knife so it's, it's completely safe isn't it from that perspective we are using a knife with our fire steel but obviously we wouldn't necessarily have to do that we could be just using a striker so this allows us to get a fire going with just the fire steel providing we've got the striker obviously so do you want to strike that then mm -hmm. and we'll see how easy this one goes up there we go straight off i don't know whether the camera can pick up but the blackness of the smoke that's coming off it that's it then increase that surface area so you're exposing fuel that hasn't burnt there you can see the black smoke coming off that all those oils they're just so important for fire lighting you smother it make sure that goes out completely very good that's so, basically gone out brilliant right yeah so we can do that so you can see there's still a little bit of fuel there that could have caught if had you not smothered it but that was really good so that is birch bark fire lighting done two ways that's the second in our fire lighting series as finn is upskilling more and more it's okay we want to sort of document his progress and, and the fire lighting from a bushcraft perspective is just so integral it seems logical to to start with this series um, if there's any techniques you would like us to practice and video put them in the comments below okay right then just before I sign off, I just wanted to make a quick mention of this local unmanaged woodland that has got lovely elements of hazel, but I hope the camera can pick up the vast amounts of the invasive species, Himalayan balsam, which is just everywhere. You can see last year's remnants on the floor, but as far as the eye can see, dotted in amongst all the native trees, is this Himalayan balsam, which has edible components to it. However, it's got exploding seed pods and it is prolific at the way it spreads and you can just see through here almost as far as the eye can see it's like walking through a jungle and obviously it's just massively out competing the local flora which is just such a shame to see anyway Finn over to you if you like this video give a thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps the channel bye yo